Thank you so much for being with us. Late notice, and then there's so many things that are going on right now. But it's times like this that it's so, so important that we're together, and that we give each other koach, and we give each other chizuk. And I felt it so, uh, it could be it's just for myself, that uh, I don't feel like just going through the night alone tonight, that my family and I want to be with everyone. Because what's been taking place and what took place over Shabbos is something that is much bigger than another date, another event, another episode. And I'm not talking at all about the US elections, not one reference. So I just wanted to make that clear that right in the beginning that when we're speaking about the turbulent times, the Rebona Shalem is running the world and, and everyone is upon everyone. Every prime minister, every king, there's nothing to do with, with, with that. But I want to talk about what, ha- what it, on a certain level happens and takes place when really big greats leave us, when big tzaddikim leave us. And although I'm very optimistic, and I'm very, very excited for the future of Am Yisrael every day, today too, very, very much so. And although I believe Bemuna Shlema that we've never been closer to the Geula, when really big nishamas that love Am Yisrael and that love the world take off, and especially when they take off so close in time, it's very, very frightening. Very frightening. Right now I'm speaking, of course, about one of the greatest people that our door, and maybe even more than just our generation, but we had him in our door, and that is Chief Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, Zecher Tzadik V'Kodesh Levracha. I can't believe I even said those words right now. Zecher Tzadik V'Kodesh Levracha. As well as his good friend, someone who I read him, read a little hesped about him earlier, just two months ago. And that is, of course, Rabbi Din Steinzalt, Zechit Tzadik, V'Kodesh Livracha. And over Shabbos, we all know that Reb Moshe's son, Reb David Feinstein, Zechit Tzadik, Livracha, a, a, a Talmud Chacham of proportions that are very rare today, a Gon Oilam, uh, had left the world over Shabbos as well. And when this comes down into the world, when this, ha- when, this, when this happens, we don't just say, Oy me hayalanu. It's time for deep, deep introspection. You know, when, when tzaddikim, and, and I, I use the term tzaddik over here, not as loose as you may think, but I guess for me and for many of us right now, tzaddik is someone that can't ignore the pain and the joy of a door and look at everything through the prism of the Ribbon Shlilam. I've read so many obituaries. I've read so many eulogies today about Chief Rabbi Sachs of Hashanah. 
And almost every single one of them was more or less the same thing. I'm going to attempt to put into words what I know already I can't put into words. That's what almost every single one of them were. So Chief Rabbi Sachs, Olav Shalom, whose energy is felt so much and it was just laid to Kavura. Everything we're saying right now should be while we're giving thanks to the Bonus for living in such a time of witnessing such greatness. Tonight, we're not going to decipher the greatness of such a person. I don't know if it could ever be really clearly articulated. I do want to share, though, a very personal story and a story that when it happened, I was very, very, um, I was surprised. And over the years, I felt so honored to be part to, to have a, to have this story. I don't have any pictures with Chief Rabbi Sachs because the only time that I spent time with him was on Shabbos. And before we get to that story, I just want to explain what I said in the beginning about when Sadiqim leave the world. As much as we say, based on the Smichus Parshios of of uh, of Chukas of Paraduma and, and when we have the Mita of Miriam, that we know that just like a Paraduma is Mechaper, so so too, I'm sorry, but the Mita of, of Aaron uh, <clears throat> and Miriam is around those parashiyot. So the, so the Gemara tells us in Moed Katan that just like the red heifer was a Kapara and brought purity onto the people, so so too the death of righteous ones is somewhat of a kapara. It brings some, some type of an atonement and a purification process onto the people, onto Amisir. And as much as that's something that we, we, we go to quite often, there's, there's another piece of chazal that is hard for me to ignore tonight. And, and I wanted to share it with you very briefly. I'm sorry I don't have it in front of you. I just have it in front of me. And it's an Orachaim. I believe it's in Parshas Shmini. And it says there that when tzaddikim die, ki be'emtsa'ut mitat ha-tzaddikim megia ketzef l'klalut Yisrael. When tzaddikim die, there is some type of a, of a rage or an anger that can be, that can meet, can reach Am Yisrael. Ki chozek Yisrael v'chiyutam hem gdolehem ha-tzaddikim. Who are the ones that provide Am Yisrael with this strength, with immunity, and with chiz, with vitality. These are the great ones. These are the righteous ones. These are the leaders. Specifically, when it comes to the Kohanim of Hashem, that they are kapara for the Am. We all know that the Kohanim are the teachers in Am Yisrael. Rabbi Sachs, Sol Shalom has been has been the teacher um, the teacher for like I saw today someone wrote for so many people that probably never went to a shear or don't buy his farm they met the Ribbon Shlevan through one of Rabbi Sachs's teachings one of his books or one of his covenant and conversation and even that name alone covenant and conversation, which was sent out to the thousands upon thousands on a weekly basis, that speaks for itself. Being in a brisk, having a covenant with someone means you have to be in conversation with them. This is a little bit alluded to in this week's Parsha, obviously, when it says, Yitzchak basada. the Yitzchak Avinu went out to convert, to, to speak to Hashem in the field. He went to go speak to their Bono Shleven. When he comes back, he meets his soulmate. Rabbi Sachs brought us to the field. Rabbi Sachs brought the whole world, not just Yidden. He, he brought so many people to be part of a conversation. And that's, the, that's something that we have to give such shevach v'hotah to. The bits of pieces of videos that you're seeing today and you're going to be seeing in the next few days and after that and after that, they show us someone that was so, so sensitive to the door, sensitive to the yachid, sensitive to the individual, sensitive to the whole nation, sensitive to the whole generation. And if, once again, it's one of these neshamas. 
that you could not put into a box, just like his dear friend, Rav Steinsatz. Maybe you could call them Hasidim, but they were even more than whatever that label means as well. It's something that's not even for us to try to put into any type of labeling. But if Rabbi Sachs himself wrote about Rav Steinsatz, and I quote, he was unique, and we are now an orphan generation, Baruch Diana Emmet, which is what Rav, Rabbi Sachs wrote about Rav Steinsatz just a little while ago. How much more so have we become more and more orphaned after Shabbos? While the tzaddikim, while these great lights are alive in this world, we're not even aware how much their presence and the light of Hashem that they show, that they shine, are protecting us, both spiritually and physically as well. Their light, their aura, their passion, their mesirut nefesh, and I would say their determination to be lamplighters, to be illuminaries, is li literally stands as a magen, stands as a shield. And it, usually we're not even aware of it. But when these tzaddikim leave the world, there's this very, very, there's this awesome fear that God forbid this magen, this protector, is, is now removed. And therefore, we drink from the fountains of their teachings. And just like I spoke to my friends from Korn and Publishing, how Rav Steinsaltz's book sales went up like crazy after his passing. I mean, Rabbi Sachs's farm are everywhere, but they're gonna, it's going to be even more. So we drink from their fountain of Torah to keep us in tune with what matters in life and to keep us as a magen as well. But I want to speak tonight about a certain midah that I witnessed firsthand that was very, very touching to me and very, very moving to me. After the Baal Shem Tov passed away, or right before the Baal Shem Tov passed away, the Chassidim asked the Baal Shem Tov, they said, how, who's going to be your successor? How are we supposed to know who to go to? So the Baal Shem Tov said, whoever teaches you how to get rid of gaiva, whoever teaches you how to, get, how to get rid of false pride, not the healthy type of pride, but gaiva, haughtiness, Whoever is able to teach you how to be in tune with that, that is the person that you should go to, that he is the successor. So <clears throat> the committee started interviewing all different types of rabbis and students and followers of the Baal Shem Tov, and no one knew exactly, no one was really saying exactly what, what the neshamas needed to hear. Everyone had a different recipe. You do this, you do these somersaults, you read that book or you, you speak about this thing 50 times in a row, and, but Lemaisa, it was only until they got to Reb Dov Ber, the Magid of Mizrich, the Mizritcher Magid, and they asked the Mizritcher Magid, so how do, how, do we get out of, how do we get out of Gaiva? So the Magid of Mizritch said, he said, there's no way. You just gotta beg, and you gotta cry for it until the Rebbe Anashleim grants you it. But there's no way, there's no method, there are no shortcuts, and there are no tricks as to how to remove yourself from being haughty. So I want to go with you back, it's probably seven years ago, and it was a Friday, and I was invited to participate in a weekend that the GA, the General Assembly, uh, was, it was probably around this time, actually. Probably this time of year. I think it was November. There was a group from Florida that was here on the GA trip, the General Assembly trip. On Friday afternoon, I played for them on the rooftop of David Citadel. Nathan Sharansky was there. Always an honor and a privilege. Talk about Gdolim. That's someone you want to run to and get some brachas from. Um, Nathan Sharansky was there, a few other chaver were there, and it was a very, very special thing. It was on a rooftop on the David, so it was beautiful. I was there with this trio, uh, an upright bass and strings, and it was, it was very peaceful. And I was staying somewhere in Yerushalayim for Shabbos, and I knew that I had to come back that Friday night 
to lead an Onik Shabbos, to lead a tish for this group that was visiting. And they told me that the chief rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs, was going to be there with them for Shabbos. And he would probably be there for this, for, for when I had to be on this Onik Shabbos. I was so intimidated. And I was so nervous and I was excited, but I was very nervous. And I showed up and I didn't know exactly what room to go to, but anyone that knows the Citadel, they usually have their weddings and their big banquets downstairs in the ballroom. So I thought to myself, it's probably not there because the ballroom is this big room and it's just a Shabbos dinner with this group from Florida. How, how, how big could it be? I go downstairs and lo and behold, it's right there in that large banquet hall. And it's a massive room. And even though, of course, it's Shabbos, there's no microphones, but there was a podium with the shlender, and I, was, I had to go on top. While Rabbi Sachs was sitting right in front of me, and together with a whole group of people that were there to hopefully be inspired. And I'm usually really not, I don't know, I, I, I tell my children, like, I've pretended to not be shy so much, but sometimes I'm not even shy. In my, in my, in my ishiyut, I do feel like I'm shy, but... I don't know, after a certain point, you just get, you, you somehow figure out how to, how to, how to, I don't know what to say, wing it, not wing it, but it's rare that you're really intimidated. It's happened you know, amongst great people and it, and it definitely was happening there. I'm gonna speak in front of, I'm gonna lead a tish. It wasn't just to give it Dvar Torah, it was like, you know, two hours or whatever, however long it was to, to lead a whole, a whole tish for Rabbi, for Rabbi Sachs and the whole Hebron. So, I get up on the podium and I avoid eye contact for dear life, obviously. I make sure that, you know, <laughs> I'm not looking right at him. And I start saying over all different types of things. I don't remember exactly which titles, which stories, but I started a nigun because I saw that the slow stuff wasn't exactly driving home. And I figured, you know, I'll just sing, I'll just start a nigun. I started singing, I die, da ding die, I die, da ding die. The room was packed with, you know, Hashem, big machers from Florida. And no one was really moving until the Lord himself gets up and starts getting the whole crowd up. And everyone in the room was dancing. So I followed them. And it happened to be that when I, as I got into this massive circle, and the whole place is dancing, and he's getting everyone, you know, to come and join him in the circle. So as our circle goes like this, and he passes by me, so he says to me, he says to me, um, Rabbi Katz, do you mind if I say something right now? I'm thinking to myself, no, Lord, I'm sorry, you cannot speak right now. Thank you, Lord. What am I going to say? Was, of course you could say something right now. Are you kidding? You could talk from now until next Hanukkah and everyone will be fine, especially me. I didn't say that, but I was basically like, are you kidding me? Please, please share. What an honor it would be. So Rabbi Sachs then goes up to the podium. He says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everyone. I just have to share something because we were singing this melody of Rabbi Shlomo Kavach. I just want everyone to know something very important right now. And I'm thinking... Oh my God, he's going to share his story with Rip Shalom. This is so beautiful. I never heard it. And he started speaking about regrets in life. And he started talking about taking advantage of things when you're able to and never push things off. He was speaking about it very intensely. And you could, say, you could see that it was striking a very personal chord uh, in his heart. And he was looking right at me. And he said that he was supposed to meet Rib Shlomo. That famous last week of Rib Shlomo's life where he spent it in England. And they had a meeting set up. But due to him, his busy, busy schedule, he had to keep on postponing it. It didn't end up working out. And they didn't end up meeting each other. And three days later, after Rib Shlomo left England, uh, Rib Shlomo passed away on that plane. Thursday night, Parshas Bayera, a plane from New York going to Toronto. And he said that he's always carried it inside of him, that he, regret, he regrets it so much that he let his busy schedule prevent him from meeting him. And, he, and he, he, he felt so bad about it. And then he continued to say that 
he then had a meeting with a group. I, 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 wanna, I hope I make you getting, getting the story as exact as I can remember it. Because I, by the, as he was saying this, my jaw, I was, my jaw dropped. I was in another world. And I was trying to pay attention to every word. But he was basically went on to say that he had then gone to a, some kind of meeting with uh, other religions. And this other religion decided, I forget who it was, but they wanted to open with song in the beginning of this gathering. And this whole chevre, this non-Jewish chevre started opening up with, because of my brothers and friends, because of my sisters and friends. And he's sitting there. This is right after Rib Shlomo died. And it came back to him and it hit him really, really hard. And why, I mean, what's so special about this story? It's him reminiscing, sharing the story. You know, the chief rabbi, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, all of a shalom, when he's in front of a big room or with in front of anyone, he can say anything and he can have you in his hand. And he did. He had everyone in his hand and he had everyone in his heart. But chief rabbi Sachs, chief rabbi Sachs had another. And instead of telling the crowd about accomplishments or great things he was able to do or great people he was able to meet. He spoke about a missed opportunity that hurt him so much. And to me, as much as he had me before then, <laughs> he mamash won my heart. And the rest of the night was basically a night of such hearts and nigunim. We kept on singing for a long, long time. I had brought for him a copy of the first book we published, Evan Shlomo, Perush of Rib Shlomo and Bereshit. He was so happy to receive it and so thankful. And we schmoozed for a while after dinner as well, after the Onik as well. And I never saw him again. But it had such a lasting impact on my life because that's real greatness. Real greatness is when you, when you show your humanity uh, Dafka in front of people that you probably think you got to show your gdula, your greatness. That was showing his greatness in the deepest, deepest way. And today, there's a fear that we all have. And I was on the phone with a number of friends during the day, wondering Who's the tzaddik that they should be running to today that they're going to find out about all these great things after they die and they, wouldn't, they don't know about it? So who are we supposed to go running to today? I'm not into comparing anyone to anybody. It doesn't really work like that. But it's very, very safe to say that Rabbi Sachs was in a completely, complete league of his own. Steinsaltz was in a complete league of his own. From this caliber, we don't really have. Maybe we do, and maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong. And uh, we'll find out that I was so wrong once Khalila, the next one, the next grade, has to leave this world. But one thing's for certain is that we're heartbroken. We are heartbroken that the age of 72, I don't know how many of you were aware of how serious the situation was. I very much was not aware of how serious the situation was. In fact, my chevra, we emailed him just two weeks ago to try and schedule something to do an event with the chief rabbi, uh, to do one of these Zoom sessions with him on Hanukkah. And his secretary answered us back and said, we're just letting him rest right now. We're not bombarding him with too much uh, work to get him strong again. We had no idea. We had no idea. I had no idea. Maybe you all did. I had no idea. And when the news came in, I got a text from my sister right after Shabbos. It was, it was Shman Shak. But after the shock kind of wears off, and then what happens is, is a mitzvah, is a reality of the world right now does not have Rabbi Sachs with us in the physical realm. It's, it's frightening, Chavre. It's frightening because he was in touch with the pulse of the nation. He was a Talmud of the Rebbe. He was a true, a sincere shliach Hashem that was so noble and regal and a mensch and everything. And of course, learned, but he was working for Am Yisrael day and night. 
He was working for us, for you and me. He was working for you and me. He was working for Hashem, but he was working for you and me. Every day. Rav Steinsatz, his sons were saying about him, he used to have a, a, a 18 to 20 hour work days. You want to say it's not healthy and neglecting to say whatever you want to say. These are tzaddik, these are giants that were working for Am Yisrael day and night. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. The shomer Yisrael, they don't, they don't rest. Rabbi Sachs was 72. What he accomplished in 72 years? People have to come back 15 Gilgulim to accomplish. Hopefully half of, you know, even half of what he did. This is a different caliber. The shaila isn't how do we become Rabbi Sachs? Because God hates imitation. Hashem Echad, the Ribbon Shlerim can't stand imitation. There's no Indian of trying to figure out how we can become Rabbi Sachs. The Shaiva is Ribbon Shlerim. Can we, can we please, can we figure out a way to open our heart and get the message? What are you saying to us? What are you telling us by taking away these giants, Dafka now, in a time that Let's face it, it is more confusing than usual because of the uncertainty that's hovering over in the air. And it's been like this for so long, and it doesn't seem like we're really getting out of it right now too fast or in the near future. And when these clear pillars of light are leaving the world, it shakes us to our core. And if it doesn't, we need to really wake up. There was a, you know, there was a way to wake up people before the Baal Shem Tov, and there was a way to wake up people after the Baal Shem Tov. The way that people would wake up other Yidin before the Baal Shem Tov was pointing out that we need to refrain from all Ra in order to have access to the good. After the Baal Shem Tov, the Avoda switched over. Rav Kluger has a whole mimer on this. After the Baal Shem Tov, the, the, the Avoda became more, let's, I want to make sure that you are focused on your koach, on your good points of what you have, and that way the evil and the bad and the Sumerah will take place. Rabbi Sachs saw the good in everyone. He pointed, he didn't just see it, he pointed out the good in everyone. And it must be that there is a very big dosage of good that's coming down to the world right now. Has to be. How so? Rabbi Sachs was nifter on Shabbos Vayera. And he's brought to Kvura on Sunday, Parshas Chayesara. Parsha of Chayasara speaks about the death of our mom, of our mother, Sara Imenu. A tamot Sara bekiat arba hi chevron. I saw a sforno that blew my mind. And that makes me smile. It's a broken smile, but it's a smile. Svarna says on the word Vatamot Sara, you could look it up. I'm sorry I don't have it in front of you. Listen to these words, this Kivat Svarna. Svarna says, Achar Shenoda Rivka, Hareuya, the Malis Makom Sara. When did Sara die? After Rivka was born. Rivka, who was, su- who was suited and fit to fill the place of Sara Imenu. Like our Ma'amaram Zal, like our rabbis taught us, Ein Tzadik Nifta Mina Oilam, a Tzadik does not leave this world, Ela Im Ken Nola Tzadik Kemoso, unless there's a Tzadik that's similar to them that is born into this world. Shineemar, Vizarach Hashemesh, Uba Hashemesh. When the sun rises, a sun sets. So there's two ways, two main ways of understanding this Sparna. One could be that yesterday there was probably tons of Jewish babies that were born, or there was one Jewish baby that was born somewhere. Or maybe not even a Jewish, maybe a non-Jewish baby that was born and will 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 or something. I don't know. And it, it has the kalim to fill in the shoes of of Rabbi Sachs, but I, I don't think we could afford to wait that long. If we're banking it on a baby that was born to that one day we'll be old enough. Although age is n- nothing but a number like we see in this parsha that Yitzchak 
met Rivka when she was three years old without getting into the depths of that, but I want to say something else, and this is what I really believe. Although Sparno, sorry about that. Although Sparno is saying over here that uh, only that Sadiq can leave the world only once someone is born that could fill their shoes. I want to say that there's a concept of, of, of life and death in our lives every single day. Every day we have the chance to be reborn again and to rid ourselves, to give have death of things that we want them to just die out. It, it could be you or, you or me. It could be any of us. It could mamish be any of us. Not to, fulfill, not to fill his shoes. It's not about necessarily being him. To learn from him, everyone. But to be a leader. To have those eyes. It's all a shaila of how desperate we are. How desperate are we? How desperate are we to fill in the void of light? Not for our sake, but how desperate are we to work for Am Yisrael? How desperate are we to be Shomre Yisrael? And the more desperate we, we are, then the more we become that light, the more that we become that which we long for. On Shabbos, I learned from Rav Yitzchak Ginsburg, should, should, be, should be feel well, long, arichus yamin, healthy years. Rav Ginsburg said, Avram Avinu, he created a mitzvah of angels coming to visit him so he could be mekayim, the mitzvah of achnasas arachim. These were not people that needed, these weren't even people, they didn't need achnasas arachim, but he was longing, he was so desperate to be mekayim, the mitzvah that his longing actually created a reality, an actual reality brought to him. Take, take a few minutes, Hever, with, with some of Rabbi Sachs' pieces, and there's, there's plenty, there's plenty. There's obviously the, you know, the famous 12-minute TED Talk that's gone around, gone viral today. There's that three minute answer about why do good things, why do bad things happen to good people that he answered, I think it was Revitzen Krinsky. That was just heart wrenching. I think you know what I'm talking about, those of you that have been following online. And to me, the first, the first interaction I ever had with his Torah was obviously Torah Studies, the book that Rabbi Sachs has on the Sichas, based on the Sichas of the Rebbe. Watch, watch Rabbi Sachs's speech at the Shluchim conference a few years back. But it's almost like in, in every single place that he's speaking, it's never about him. It's never about him. Even if he shares personal stories about his father or whatnot, it's just not about him. He didn't get in the way of his avoda. So in the schos of Rabbi Sachs, in the schos of Sarah Imenu, and in honor of all the potential Shomer Yisrael, of those that can't go to sleep at night. We beg Hashem for Rachmanus on us. We don't have the protective shields of giants like Rav Steinsatz, of giants like Rabbi Sachs, of giants like Rav Feinstein. I, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm not speaking about him as, as much. I don't know as much about him. I know a little that I do know we're speaking about another huge, tremendous, not just Tamil Chacham Tzadik Gaon, but a Baal Midas, a tremendous, a humble Baal Midas. These are people that didn't get in the way of their own avoda. If that's one thing that we could take away right now and beg Hashem for mercy, please let us not get in the way of what we're supposed to do in this world. Please let us be desperate seekers, desperate. Please, it's getting, it's, you know, the, the whole kufa over here with, with energies being put into things that are so meaningless. And 
relationships being dried up because we can't be close to each other like the way that we knew. Satan was working triple time. My, my daughter asked me today, what's Satan? My oldest daughter said, what was it, Satan? So we're learning a piece in the PSN system together. And he brings down the concept of Satan comes and messes with you. What's Satan? I didn't even want to tell her because I don't want to give it cue. I don't want to give it an existence. But it's, it's like a quiet, quiet dagger these days. It's like a quiet, it's not making big. It's quietly seep, seeping in. Especially when it brings you in atzvut, bring you in pain. Somehow we should be blessed. First of all, the family of Rabbi Sachs, his wife and children, should be comforted amongst the mourners of Tzion. And they should only know of simchas. And they should continue to give their Abba and their husband tremendous nachas. And Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarach, please God, we will be consoled by allowing ourselves to delve deep into the legacy that Rabbi Sachs has left for you and me and our children and our grandchildren. And may each of us rise to the occasion, whatever that means, because everyone has to up the game now. Everyone. Every one of us can be a gate opener. Every one of us can be a lamp lighter. Every one of us can seek a little bit deeper to say, how do I work more for Am Yisrael and for the whole world? It's not just a Jewish thing. It's got to be clear to us. We're in this with the whole world. We have to love the whole world. It's not just a Jewish thing. It's not just a from thing anymore. We got to love everyone. Everyone. We got to care less about the things that we know already keep us divided. We already know of most things that keep us divided. It's not about trying to figure out how to not be divided anymore. It's just about not giving that as much energy. Rabbi Sachs was somehow able to always keep priorities in the forefront, to keep the healthy perspective in his genuine, genuine way, very unique way, very genuine way, which all stemmed from humility. And it stemmed from him not getting in the way. We, all of us here tonight, whoever's with us online, whoever will be with us later, and all of Am Yisrael, we're, we're waking up painfully. We would love to not have to wake up painfully. We would love to wake up with Simcha. I just want to remind my Chavra, many of you have written today about the fear and, and how could Hashem be doing this and what does it all mean? Rabbi Sachs himself said, God doesn't want us to understand and makabel why bad things happen to good people. But I just want to remind us one more important thing. I want to remind us one more important thing. None of us understand how this, how, how this can be happening now, but none of us understand how the good happens either. None of us understand it. When a healthy baby is born, do we, we understand that. When a couple comes together in a Britney swing, we understand that. We don't understand that. Humility enables us to enter into this world of not needing to understand. Humility allows us and enables us to come into this world of letting go. So in honor of Rabbi Sachs, we'll sing one nigga. And Nigun, I believed, I believe he loved this Nigun. Oh, 
off those opportunities and say I'll get there when I can it's not a must what would any of us do right now to have one more conversation with him right anyone that loses a parent knows they would do anything in the world to just have that one more conversation with them right so our teachers are like our parents because even though our parents brought us into this world our teachers bring us into the next world. upon him that the chief rabbi is having right now up there. The Rambam is waiting online. The Lubavitch Rebbe is waiting, standing there online. But also the pshutim, the pshutim, the simpletons, the peasants. How much nachas, how much glowing nachas they have in Shemaim. That such an Hashem came down to this world and left it a different world. And it's up to you and I to keep on making sure that that light that he brought down expands, expands, and has room for everyone to fall under and feel like it's part of their home, their covenant and conversation as well. So much love, everyone. So much koach and strength to everyone. Let's stick together. Let's seek out each other. Let's do those things we're not normally so fast to do. And let's believe that we could all, with all the light that these giants have left for us, we can bring the great day. We can bring the other side, the final blow. The final blow. And with too much, with so much love in the world, we won't even have to shoot one shot in the war for real peace. Like Rabbi Nachman says, Mashiach yichbosh et kol haolam bli yeria achat. Mashiach will come and conquer the whole world without even one gunshot. Rabbi Sachs' legacy of love and light, filling us with the ammunition that we need. We're almost there. Hold on tight, everyone. We're almost there. We're almost there.